Welcome to episode 75. So proud that we've gotten to this milestone number. If you don't remember me, I'm the marketing director for Downtown Podcast, filling in for Susan, our co-host, who is sick today. We wish her well and hope she gets better soon. But tonight we have two awesome community members, Ryan Cormier and Chase Spillman. And before we get started, I'm going to have you guys do some rock, paper, scissors to go into this. All right. Uh, All right. You ready for this? Let's go. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah, All right, so it. you're a loser, but <laughs> you will pick. Oh, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> ouch. That's how we welcome people at the All podcast. Right. You're going to pick this uh, fortune okay. for uh, the whole downtown community, and this fortune cookie is going to snake starting from the back to the front of the audience, and you're going to do a little telephone where you whisper to the next person what you think the first person said about the fortune cookie. At the end of our episode, we'll compare the actual fortune to what's um, been thought to have been said regarding the fortune cookie. And Jonathan here is going to come up and get our fortune. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So we're going to start with Ryan. You recently moved here from Dallas. I did. And you opened a digital marketing agency down here, but I brought you on the show to talk about Dumpster Fire Fantasy Football, an interesting you name. Do you want yeah. to tell us about that and where that name originates from? Yeah, so Dumpster Fire is a fantasy football platform that a good friend and I built. Um, and it was an idea that, that originated as many great ideas do over a nice cold beer. Um, we got together nice. and we were just talking about fantasy football we're huge fantasy football lovers and you know we just kind of got to thinking like why do we always play with ESPN or CBS or Yahoo and then we realized there just really isn't anything what we thought better out there and so right. you know after several beers we decided we're going to build something better and the name dumpster fire comes from if you're an urban dictionary fan it's it's you know a complete and utter disaster it's something <laughs> nobody wants to deal with so if you have a horrible car that's always breaking down God, my car is such a dumpster fire, and <laughs> and so as kind of a fun play on the name, we we as a way of shaming the last place team in every league uh, that whoever comes in last gets a nice little dumpster fire trophy in their trophy case on their profile, um, right. just as a memory of that that horrible season. Because you're such a great friend, you want to shame the losers. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> you mentioned that you found some shortcomings in the CBS and the Yahoo uh, fantasy football platforms. Yeah. Let us know what is different about yours and what you decide to offer. Yeah. Well, the thing about I mean CBS, Yahoo. ESPN, they're all great, uh, but they're news organizations, and, and their primary goal is to sell content and sell advertising, and we wanted to be different. So when we built Dumpster Fire, our number one goal was to focus on the game and the experience of playing fantasy football, because that's what it's really all about, right? It's, it's an experience right. with your friends and family, coworkers, whatever. So we cut out all of the content. We minimize the advertising. We don't have full screen takeovers right. and video ads like they do. Um, and we're not trying to fulfill a, a big corporate agenda. We're just trying to create something that, that will allow people to have fun doing something that they already love. Um, and so we really just focused on a, a sexy, elegant design, really nice user interface, and, and again, a product that will allow people to have a lot of fun when they're playing fantasy football. Right. So actually, football season is not that far away. But you said that in the past as you've just done beta testing with your friends, but this year, this season, you're going to be opening it up to the public, right? Absolutely. So if people want to go join your fantasy football platform and reach out to you, where can they reach you? Yeah, that's a great question. So if anybody interested, you can check out the site. It's dumpsterfire.com. Um, you can go on social media. We're at dumpsterfireff on Twitter. Um, hit us up. We're very responsive. We'll get back to you. If you have any questions, I'm at Ryan J. Cormier on Twitter. Hit me up. I'll, I'll get back with you. And uh, we would love for you guys to check it out. It's, it's a cool platform. We're excited. Thanks so much. I've never played, but I will try it out this time. And I'll tell you what I think about it. Awesome. We're going to move over here to Chase, and he's doing something amazing. I was in disbelief the first time I heard what Chase was working on. He's actually making socks made out of recycled plastic. So I want to reach out to you and have you tell the community about what you're making. And first of all, how did you get started, and where was the idea that came? And meanwhile, I'm going to be really creepy and hold up this prosthetic <laughs> and, and rub it to show you how absolutely soft this sock is, because it really is, and it's I can't so believe it. It's so soft. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, it started five years ago uh, when my sister was in high school and I was in my freshman year of college. Uh, we realized there was just a lack of passion uh, in society, and we come from an entrepreneurial family, and we just didn't, we're bored with typical corporate culture and just what it was about. And this was about the time when Zappos and Tom Shoes was getting big, and, mm -hmm. and or were getting big. And we wanted to start learning more about social enterprise and create ideas around social enterprise, you know, about activism and giving back and around causes. 
And so kind of fast forwarding, <laughs> kind of fast forwarding uh, to now, uh, in March, we had just a wild idea to create socks because they're fun, right. but we wanted to change the whole sock game. We wanted to say, how can we make fun socks that matter? And uh, essentially, that's what this is right here. It's a cloud group project. Uh, our whole goal is to, uh, well, our mission statement is to do the impossible by inspiring a community collaboration, culture, creativity, and social responsibility. And so this sock is a, is a great symbol of that. Uh, we met uh, Orly Waba with, with Life Vest Inside at a Catalyst Creative Week here. Right. And uh, she's doing something on November 9th called World Kindness Day. And there's over 70 countries that are now involved. And That's we're awesome. the official sock. And we're actually gonna do the shirts as well. And it's 100% made out of recycled, uh, made out of 100% recycled plastic. So I can't even wrap my head around that. So I wanna ask you more about the process of turning plastic into a sock. I asked you earlier, are you just grabbing plastic bottles from your friends <laughs> after late night parties? You said no. So let us know a little bit more about the process and getting that made. Absolutely. So we do definitely have plans in the future to create uh, local uh, recycling facilities to where we can use that plastic and then we want to we help communities be more sustainable. Right. So take that plastic, ship it to our facility, and then bring clothes back to our community, and whether you give it to the homeless or if you have cool creative ways, give it to nonprofits, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, but essentially right now what's happening is there's a facility out in North Carolina that takes all the bottles, they turn them into flakes, they turn them into little tracer balls, right. and then they turn it into a thread, it gets woven into a fabric, this fabric right here, it's 100% awesome. recycled polyester. So it's a polyester blend uh, material. And so uh, the tracer balls are really cool because we can actually tell you how much plastic is in, how many plastic bottles are in that sock. So if we say, oh, it's two and a half plastic bottles in that sock, or there's three plastic right. bottles in that sock. So that's kind of how we measure it is by bottles, essentially. Uh, so that's that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely excited. And our whole goal is to just you know inspire community culture and creativity uh, through our socks. And so we have another sock that we're doing with a band from Massachusetts called Transit. Uh -huh. And so it's to help them stay on tour and uh, you know, to continue maintain their funds so they can continue to stay on tour and spreading their positive music. And we're also doing another one that's called a literacy sock, which is to encourage little kids to read. So all of our socks have meaning and symbols behind them and great stories that go with them. So. That's cool. That's so awesome. And when you get more made, I'm totally going to support them all day, every day. Because um, I use plastic, so sorry. but. That is an awesome project, and I'm so glad that you brought that to downtown community. I really think that you fit in with our culture of wanting to be generous and helpful and great to society and everything. So thank you so much. And with that, we're going to conclude our community segment. Thanks so much. All right, Christina. You, you have an empty glass, which I'm proud of you for. I'm not, I'm not upset. Yeah, we got another drink coming for you. You just drink so quick. But you're such a weirdo, OK? <laughs> you really are. And I am so excited, because you are going to totally let that out. But first, people need to understand how successful of a weirdo you are. So our next guest was not in the fashion space two years ago, but she is now. And she is now an expert in fashion technology. And you are now the host of a podcast called Refashion.co, and you have even interviewed the chief of, or the editor and chief of Vogue. Big deal, really big deal. So please put your hands together for Christina Katana. Thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's start. Let's just start by talking about how weird you are, because you like you, you think you're gonna be some. So you think you can dance, master. But in your own head, but not in reality. Is that what I've heard? Um, absolutely. Um, I love the show So You Think You Dance. I wish that I was a dancer, but I'm the worst person on the dance floor. I love to interpret it, dance with my friends. And what do you like to interpret? <laughs> my feelings. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, I like it. Okay, so tell me about these crazy dance parties you have. Um, you know, you have a girlfriend over here on the keyboard just stroking the keys. We're <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, just stroking the You mean pressing them down? No. Or... Okay, no, stroking the keys. Right, okay. Stroking the so keys. So no music. No, no, there's music coming out of the keyboard. There's music coming out of the keyboard and out of our, um, out of, out of our, our, our phones. And out of our body. Great, great, great. Okay. Um, wow, that really, this is a terrible start. But we're going to get over it. We're going to get over it. Okay. 
so you love you love crafts also, right? Like you like sticking yeah. stickers on <laughs> stuff and like cutting things out with paper, right? Yes, I'm in Las Vegas and I'm probably the only person that made sure to bring my glue stick. Right. And you said there's glitter on you all the time. Yes. I love to craft. Does, is that a problem? <laughs> Does anyone have a problem with her crafting? No. <laughs> Maybe we'll be no. We've got a, there's a crafter back there. <laughs> oh, good. We got you a drink. Okay, now it's time for the real interview. All again. right. Like mm. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about uh, some of this entrepreneurship stuff. So you sure. um, have been focused on fashion, but also especially female entrepreneurs and like female leadership. So tell me a little bit about um, how you can, um, or just tell, tell me about what leadership looks like. Sure. So, um, like Dylan said, I'm focused on the fashion industry, specifically with tech entrepreneurs in the fashion space. So what that looks like for me is a lot of female entrepreneurs in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, with the fashion industry, as we all know, there's lots and lots of um, influencers. You know, Chanel says jump, the world jumps. So what that looks like for, for fashion technology um, in, this, in, this, in the context of leadership, for me, is really empowering people to be that leadership that can really transform the industry, transform people in business, transform the world. Ooh. Okay, so let's say a female entrepreneur, how many do we have in Samsung? Okay. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. Okay, and then what about anybody who's female and um, is part of a startup, like any kind of high-risk downtown deal? Okay. Should be at least as many, but yeah. that's okay. It's all right. It's not a problem. Um, okay, so what have you um, learned about where the boundaries are in fashion? Like, because I don't quite know. Does it, is it just clothes? Like, or no. does it, is, like, is it decorating this room? And, like, is that all fashion? Or where does it kind of end? And where um, are the boundaries that people can push? Sure. No, fashion is absolutely um, self-expression. Oh. Right? Oh, it's as big as self-expression. Yeah. Okay. It's, it is who you are as a person. It is the lifestyle that you create for yourself. It's who you embody. It's what you stand for. It's the ethics that you live by. It's the connections that you want to create. Fashion, to me, um, is, is, is all of that. So... Did that answer the question? Well, yeah, no, it did. But what's fashion tech? Like, where do you start? Sure. Like, because I mean, I understand fashion is just everything that's magical about the world. But like, what is, where does the tech come into that? The, the way that tech comes into place is really how can we use technology to further the industry? So what technologies can we build to, con to connect retailers to the con their consumers? Um, what technologies can we build to have the consumers connect to what the value, what the actual brand values are for, for those brands. Um, and so what it really does do for the industry is it, I guess I'm saying connect a lot, it creates connection, powerful yeah. connection and community. And what it does is it, 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 it strengthens um, what the brands stand for and it allows for, um, I'm just speaking in no, circles no, no, now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm what you're saying is like, it's really about the fashion part of it, sort of like the feeling that you have and the technology is really about how to broadcast it to as many people as possible it's and how, you, yeah. how to get the message out. It's how you can broadcast it. It's how you can strengthen your brand by creating community engagement, um, understanding where your traffic's coming from, measurement, data. It's no longer about intuition, guys. Like fashion has been rooted on intuition and what buyers say, what editors say, but now consumers have a say in what's going on in, in, in this world. Um, consumers are getting smarter. The fashion industry is now stepping up. Okay, so describe the fashion industry. What does it look like right now? The fashion industry right now is getting smarter. Um, and the reason why is that there's lots of female entrepreneurs coming to the plate. Woo! Um, yeah, yep. female entrepreneurs, they understand emotion. They understand what's going on. Um, business isn't just about numbers and data. That's very important, but it's also about um, emotion and really connection. So with fashion technology, you have the, the best of both worlds. You have the data points, you have the measurement, you have the, sti the statistics. And you also have the emotion and um, the connection. Um, right now, fashion is, is pushing forward. Both communities are coming together. We've got the tech industry and the fashion communities want to, working, want to work together. The fashion industry is sharing their historical knowledge, what's going on, what has been going on, and the tech industry is like, awesome. What are the challenges that you're facing? Um, how can we help your business move forward? Let's work together and um, make some shit 
happen. Okay, deal. So can guys get in on this or? Just There's tons. Around? There are tons of guys in the fashion tech space, and that's what's so great about fashion tech is that it's not just like you know this type of person. Um, it's so diverse. What's you, this? This type of person? Oh, you're just pointing. That was a queen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that was like. Oh, as, you're talking I, about I was, yourself, was, like this. <laughs> or are you I was about pushing up my noses? invisible glasses. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought small noses. <laughs> yeah. Not small, small noses. But yeah. Invisible glasses. Yeah, Ner no guys. Nerds, nerds, guys. guys no, and that's what's so great is that you were bringing together these two communities, um, which historically probably would have never worked together. Um, and what that looks like is endless possibility, right? So right. guys, come come jump on board. We need your minds just like you need ours. Okay, emotional guys? Emotional guys, non-emotional guys, don't worry. I'll convert okay, all, you. <laughs> all types of guys, emotional yeah. or non. Okay, so we know what the fashion industry looks like now. We kind of understand how you think of technology and fashion, but um, I'd love to hear some of the stories about people who push the boundaries, um, because especially if you can take that and apply it to um, like small entrepreneurs, and if there's lessons in there where they can say, like, this is what the box says the, the edges are, but what can we do to break through that and, and change the world? Sure. Look, it's all about discovering what is, um, like, what is missing in the customer experience, right? So an example that I can share with you right now is an ex-Googler um, that I know that created a brand called Third Love. And what she noticed as a female, how hard it is for all you women in the audience to find a bra that fits for you, right? So you are going to, let's just say Victoria's Secret, you're going inside of the changing room and you're in there in your socks and you come out and you're like, can I please have a 34D? You're really yeah, no, embarrassed. I'm you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I can, I can you're embarrassed. You're like, this does not need to be this way. So what did she do? She developed a technology that allows you to use your phone, take two selfies in two minutes. They're able to find and um, using data points um, your perfect bra size, and um, it's shipped directly to you in a box. You are that entire experience that you're embarrassed, um, that you don't know what size it is that you're you're looking for is completely gone. Um, so that is something that is going on right now. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes. yes. All right, future. <laughs> Let's get in the future. And this is what's so great about fashion technology is that we're taking on different ideas from different industries, healthcare, um, science. Another interesting person that I know, Andy Goodman, he works alongside a lot of scientists and what they're doing right now is that they are researching ways um, to create these smart materials and smart materials are gonna change our world. So get this, um, imagine a dress that you can tug and it's gonna change from like going from work, so it's maybe let's just say it's knee length and you wanna go out for um, a date with your hot babe, right? So, it, it transforms and it actually shifts its shape and it, 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 and it, and it moves to a, a smaller size. Or you are, yeah, yeah. or, uh, you know, in that sense, smart materials, um, um, materials that can actually change their density. So you are, you are at um, the airport, you're going, you're going from um, Nevada and you're going to Washington. There's climate change there and your, your outfit, your, your jacket is smart enough to change its density, its form, and it turns into a poof, like completely like a down jacket. So that is in our future. Those types of innovations, those types of materials, and what that does is that it just like, you. I, I could talk about this forever. Sustainability is in that, everything. Okay, I'm rambling. We've only got one minute. Got it. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah. That's good, actually, well, I, love, I love the idea of these clothes that change thickness, hardness, and um, length. Yeah. <laughs> but like if you think yeah. bigger, like what what is that what does that create for us, right? What that creates for us is that like, you know, people thinking outside of the box, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly right. No, so no, Dylan's gonna you be out. You promised we wouldn't you, go penis jokes on no. <laughs> You're gonna see no. him at the at the club like pulling on a girl's dress. Like, hey, wait, Christina get said. Get shorter, get shorter, right? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. The very last question. Um, what can people do specifically to think outside of the box? Look, guys, um, don't sell out on yourself. Um, being an entrepreneur is is tough. Um, creating ideas that are outside of the box is tough. It's not all unicorn eyelashes and gumdrops. It really isn't. Um, uh, I'm sorry. She's from California. It's
not as easy for life. Not, <laughs> life's not easy being a unicorn. People expect magic. Sometimes we're not on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize there was going to, I didn't mean that, and I didn't realize there was going to be any unicorns in the audience. And what I meant by that is. I mean, it's just, they, they, everyone expects magic when they walk in. I mean, it's a lot of expectation there, for a unicorn. There, there is, yeah. I get, I, I get that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But something, what was the question again? I'm completely off kilter. <laughs> I don't even think it matters. Thank you very much for coming out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Ventriloquism week! Yes! Yes! Yes, that's why I was doing that. It wasn't very good, I recognize. I apologize. Um, in a couple of days on Saturday, there's a really important holiday. Where's Evelyn? Where is she? Did she go away? Is she the fortune cookie lady? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Um, well, I don't know where she is, but in a couple of days, we have National Fortune Cookie Day. Yes. yes. Do you guys know the history of the fortune cookie? No. No? Where do you think it comes from? America. Who said San Francisco? Good job. Yes, it does. Actually, in the late 1800s, in the late 1800s, it was uh, in a couple of very small societies in Japan, but it wasn't popular. And then a couple of Japanese people moved to San Francisco, and they were immigrants, and they made a bakery, and they're making the fortune cookies. Then it became an American classic. Does anyone have any fortune cookie superstitions? Anybody? Shout them out. Come on. In bed. In bed. That's not a superstition, but I like that <laughs> saying, though. That's good. It's, there's no more fun way to do that than that. This guy. I just eat it. You just eat it. Well, for some people, that's a superstition. If you read the fortune and then you don't eat the cookie, it becomes bad luck. Sure. For me, I can't have anyone else hand me the fortune cookie. I get very mad. If I don't touch it first, I can't open it. It's not mine. It's bad luck. Anybody else? Uh, All right. So yes. today happens to be the birthday, the anniversary of an American classic. Does anyone know? No. Nope. Disneyland. Woo! Disneyland was born today. Woo! Yes. Woo! Can you guess? Can you guess how old Disneyland is? 59 years. I'm impressed. Yes, very good. Do you know what's hashtagging? Do you know what's hashtagging on Twitter? Disneyland 60. Because they can't just be like in the now and celebrating 59. No, they got to talk about next year because it's all about the big number. That's wrong! I'm saying live in the moment! You know what I'm saying? It's about now! Yes, so to celebrate Disneyland, we're going to do the Mac Holiday thing. That's my name, by the way, if I didn't say it. Mac Holiday, Holiday What TV. Uh, we're going to sing a Disney song, so please get up. Yes. Yes. It's time for a song. I can't sing. That doesn't matter. I don't care about that. <laughs> Are you ready, Lenny? We're good? Let's You'll go. know the song when you hear it. We're all going to sing together. We're going to be a little family. Because we're a, we're a small world, aren't we? Oh. 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 After a world of tears, it's a world of hope and Lastly, what am I drinking here? Does anyone know? I'll tell you the three basic ingredients. We got rum, we got sugar, what? Lime juice. Well, lime juice is in it. Why not pickle juice? Dan, you with the pickle juice. That, that holiday I told you was two months ago. Get out of here. We got rum, we got lime, we got sugar. It's a classic daiquiri. Because in two days, it's National Daiquiri Day. Yes, yes. And my friend Calvin, working at the bar at the Scullery, made this for me. Thank you, Calvin, very much. I mean, I paid for it, but you know, he made it for me very well. All right, moving on now. 
Ooh, that's tasty. Get, get a daiquiri, people. Well, we got this guy here, sponsor Dot Vegas, VP of Marketing, Tyson McKay. <laughs> yes. That's right. Thank By you. the way, third month, third month in a row, sponsoring Downtown Podcast. I mean, come on. That's so amazing. Thank you. <laughs> hey, absolutely. Yeah, man. really no awesome. Problem, problem. So for those uh, people who may not remember or weren't here last couple times, give them the quick four and one on Dot Vegas. Uh, dot Vegas is a new top level domain. Is it's a new domain instead of your dot com dot org dot net uh, dot edu, you can get a dot Vegas. Your domain name ending in the extension dot Vegas. So it's really exciting. It's exciting for the city. It's exciting for the area. Anybody that wants uh, to just be related to Vegas in any way, you can you can jump on, hold on to that brand, the brand that uh, people spend millions of dollars uh, around the world. Uh, uh, marketing and uh, and build your new company around Las Vegas. And Las Vegas, Vegas itself, just the name is like this brand equity. It's a big deal. Absolutely. And you guys having, I think it's August 14th, there's a land rush, I hear. August 14th. So let them know, what is a land rush? What does it do? Man, August 14th to September 10th, you got to get in. It puts you in priority placement. So September 15th is general availability for all Las Vegas domains. August 14th, put you in a place where you can jump ahead of the line. So if you want scaryunicorn.vegas or if you want uh, yeah. fashionista.vegas or if you want something like that, uh, something fun and, and flamboyant, then you got to get ahead of the curve because everybody's going to be registering that when it comes to general availability. Okay, now speaking of uh, Disneyland, am I allowed to do Disneyland.vegas or is that just not against the law? Uh, you know what? You can register Disneyland.Vegas if you what? want if you want the repercussions of Disney coming after you so whatever. You it's it's, it, it's right? up to you you're I mean we're game for whatever I love it absolutely so now um, go daddy I hear there's like a go daddy happening they have a dot Vegas with them what's that story go daddy go daddy has been a big supporter of dot Vegas they're really excited and go daddy is the 800 pound gorilla so uh, when it comes to selling domains if you have go daddy behind you um, you, you know, you're, you're in a good place. So just, just this last week, we, had, we were on the front page of GoDaddy, which has a million views every single day. GoDaddy has decided to uh, put up GoDaddy.Vegas, which actually goes to their GoDaddy uh, site. And you can buy, you can actually start purchasing .Vegas names right now. You can pre-register them right now. That's awesome. So that's the land rush thing. You do it early. So that's that's a land rush. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, so that can anyone be a part of the land rush? Anybody can be a part of the land rush. If you want to jump to the front of the line, you want you want to be a part of the land rush. Right. If you want to just wait and and leave it to chance and and Why jump in it. Why would you do that? Why don't you know. leave it to chance? Get no to Dot Vegas now. Why wouldn't you? Who's would you guys it? agree? Yeah. Who's gonna get? Oh, Dot Vegas? Would you get? Yeah. I want to hear. I want to hear some uh, some Dot Vegas possibilities. Anybody want to share them? Come on. Most afraid? creative. Most creative. Most Dot creative. Dot Vegas. He says I love. Vegas. <laughs> Good one. All right. Divorces. 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 Divorces.